What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Board Games Are For Everybody, where today we are going to be taking a look at Zodiac Clash. Now, this is a game that I bought strictly because of its aesthetics. I think it looks phenomenal once it's set up, which you will see in a sec. Uh, we may not get the full effect because it's not daylight out when you get some sun coming through the window onto this board it looks really great basically the general premise of zodiac clash is that you are trying to match four of your constellations in a row while preventing your opponent from doing the same thing now this description definitely makes you think connect four and you wouldn't be wrong you wouldn't be wrong by saying connect four. That is definitely that is definitely a good uh, guess when it comes to how the game plays. But it is a bit more complex than connect four is. I'm just gonna set it up here. Basically, the way the game works is that it is laid out in. Tiers. There are four layers of the board. Uh, I don't think we actually have the full thing set up here. We will do that quickly as we go through this. This is also on the wrong. Oh no, it's on the right side. Okay, that one goes there. This one goes here. This one goes here. And then we are supposed that was in there somewhere. Grab that beat. There we go. Uh, we are supposed to use these little star-shaped guys just to kind of pin everything down. It's just to hold everything in place to make it a little smoother. Uh, I'm not going to do this with all of them. Just for this ex uh, example here, we're going to put one on each side, though, just to help it stay a little balanced here. But as you can probably see from all this, <laughs> all this wobbling that's going on, uh, you can actually move all of these individual tiers of the board, which is pretty cool. I might have to put a couple more on here to keep it stable. It does seem to be drooping just a little bit. Maybe four would be better. You are supposed to put eight on each thing. So, or sorry, six on each thing. So hopefully just doing four here will keep it stable. Yeah, at this point, we may as well just put all of them on, but it's, we'll just do the four and hopefully it's okay. Alrighty. So like I was saying, as you can see, it does rotate here, which is a big concept in the game. It definitely makes it a lot harder when it comes to trying to connect four <laughs> in the simplest terms. And our last piece here to put on is just an aesthetic thing, just a little sun. That, if I can get it together here sticks into the middle of the board to kind of help keep everything together. So this is our play area. You can kind of see it on the camera a little bit. We have that really nice rainbow metallic kind of shine that changes the color dependent on how the light hits it. This is a great aesthetic. I really like how it looks. So the next thing we got is if i can get this here i think this ended up being a little bigger because we ended up sleeving all of these is we have our ability cards basically the way the game works is that each player gets to choose a power based on the different uh, astrological signs um, the way the instructions say it is that you can either randomly be dealt a card or you can go 
by what your sign is. So let's say we were doing that. I would be playing as the Gemini. And we'll just pick a random one here for our opponent, who is going to end up being the Scorpio. So I would choose, if I can find it here, they are all labeled. Obviously, the Scorpio is the Scorpion. And the Gemini should be easier to find than it is it's up here. And we got the Gemini. So the way that the game works on the bottom row here, you can see we have a bunch of symbols. You would place your character down on the appropriate symbol as your start space. Uh, mine is this one here. And we are now set up to play. We need to make sure that one of these things is aligned towards a player. And the player who does not have a line, once that goes up, is the first player to go. So on each turn, players have, I believe it's three actions or four actions. Uh, and those actions include moving your piece, uh, placing down one of your constellations, or moving the board uh, in the direction stated via the comets on each tier. You can see each tier has comets going in a different direction that indicates which way the comet goes. Each individual card also has a special ability on the back that can be used. Um, they also have the personality of said uh, astrological sign. However, we are more interested in just the special ability at the bottom here. The astral power of the Scorpio is that your zodiac mover can move twice as a single action. So that's pretty helpful. As we just stated, you are allowed to either move your player, change the direction of the tiers, or place one of your constellations down. So being able to move twice could be pretty helpful. So say the Scorpio goes first, they may want to move one space or two spaces by using their power. And then from this point, they can either move the tiers if they wanted to, or they could place one of their constellations either to the left, well, that's the wrong left, <laughs> either to the left, the right, up, or down, so long as you have these dots that connect to the space. Uh, you are only allowed to put a constellation on a space you are adjacent to, and once you place a constellation down, you can no longer go into that space. However, if a constellation were already placed down, one of your actions, so long as you're adjacent to the piece, instead of putting a constellation down, could also be to pick a constellation up. Now you can also pick up your opponent's constellations, so that kind of gives you a bit of strategizing to do in balancing putting your constellations down, as well as attempting to make sure your opponent isn't getting a row of four going themselves. So now that we've done this, let's say that for whatever reason, we want to move things this way, more likely to try and keep the Gemini from getting up because we have now blocked them from getting to the next tier here. And that would end the turn for the Scorpio moving over to the Gemini. So just like the Scorpio, the Gemini also has a power the astral power of the Gemini, you have two zodiac movers clipped together as one zodiac mover to start. You may unclip or reclip at any time as a free action as long as two uh, as long as the two occupy the same space. An unclipped single mover can use both actions but may not use the move action twice in a turn. So with the Gemini specifically, as you can see, we can take 
the figure apart. And we now have two movers we can use to go around the board. However, that mover cannot move two spaces in the same turn. So we could still move, say, one turn. And from this point, say we wanted to throw one of our constellations down uh, up on the second tier as well. And then if we wanted to, we could also start moving this here. Now, to be clear, you do not have to place every single, uh, sorry, you don't have to perform every action in a turn. You can just do up to that amount. So if we didn't want to move this piece over, we wouldn't have to do that. So now that our Gemini is finished, that would bring us to the Scorpio's turn once again. So let's say that they use one, two to come down here because they're using their power to move two spaces instead of one. And then they decide that they're going to put a constellation on this space down here. They now have two constellations in a row, and the object of the game is to get four constellations in a row going up the entire tier here. So now that we've placed a constellation here, we could use another action to actually start moving back up this way. And then say we wanted to, for whatever reason, just move this guy to the left, or to the right, sorry, I keep getting my directions mixed up. <laughs> to the right, we have now moved the upper tier, which currently holds nothing on it, but that is okay. So that would bring us back to the Gemini. So say we wanted to move one space here, we could also move this guy one space here. And say we want to put a constellation down right here. Now, that would actually... I guess we wouldn't be able to move this one because our power does say we can only use the move action of one side. So got to make sure you read those rule cards and keep them in mind. Forgetting rules is something I do all the time. So from this point, the Gemini, if they wanted to, could move this section one space over to prevent the Scorpio from having two constellations lined up. However, it also prevents the Gemini who has now created their own break in their constellations. So switching up the tiers can definitely get tricky as more constellations are placed on the map. So from this point, we would come back to the Scorpio, say they want to go one, two, and possibly put a constellation up on the top here, and then maybe they want to start moving back down this way, but instead of using their power, they're just going to go one space into the middle tier here. So coming back to the Gemini, we might... Well, we're going to have to move this guy over here because each one of these spaces is blocked by a constellation. However, like we said at the beginning, you can use one of your actions to pick up your opponent's constellations and return them to your opponent's inventory. So we could get rid of that one, which starts making things a little harder for the Scorpio. And say we just want to move, but because we picked up a constellation this turn, we can no longer place a constellation down. So we would probably just end our turn by probably rotating this upper board or even this middle board here so that we don't have to worry about these two constellations. And that's more or less how the game plays. Uh, the game ends once one of the constellation uh, one of the players one of the astrological symbols here um, get a complete row of four on their uh, on their constellations and you just keep playing until one player makes that happen now as we said before trying to do this well Rotating the board can certainly get tricky, but 
if you like Connect Four or stuff like that, I actually think there's a lot of strategy here. Uh, it, it's definitely visually impressive. Like once you have this thing set up and you start doing the rotations, you start putting uh, different constellations onto the board. This is actually a really, really stunning game. And I, I honestly think a lot of that comes from the metallic kind of uh, board here, that kind of rainbow metallic-y look. Uh, like I was saying earlier, if you play this during the daylight, you have some sun coming in through the window. It's got a really nice visual presence to it. But yeah, that is more or less Zodiac Clash. Um, this video was a little more uh, disorienting than usual. Uh, I, I kind of lost my train of thought here and there, but it's a good thing that these are uh, reviews and not actually instructional videos <laughs> but that is pretty much it for zodiac clash uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you have played zodiac clash let me know what you think about it do you enjoy it uh, do you also like that rotation in the connect four kind of premise plus the ability cards all being fairly uh, varied and different definitely add some strategy to it um, if you guys are on instagram uh, feel free to give the Board Games Are For Everybody Instagram page a follow. We upload photos and some videos just about things that we're playing, things that we find, stuff like that. So thank you guys very much for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I will see you all next time. But until then, just remember, Board Games Are For Everybody. Hopefully I'll see you all then. Peace.